You're wondering why your hair is curly while your sister's hair is straight. Genetics explains that difference. What is genetics? Genetics is a branch of biology that studies genes, variation, and heredity. Who is the father of genetics? Gregor Johann Mendel. And he presented in experiments the nature of inheritance in 1866. Mendel used the garden pea plant, Pisum sativum, as his main specimen for his genetic experiments. What is heredity? Heredity is the transmission of traits from parent to offspring. Example of traits transmitted from parents to offspring are color of the skin, shape of face, height, hair, types, and many more. Trait is determined by a gene. What is a gene? Gene is a factor or information carried by each individual organism which determines the visible trait of an organism. And a single gene can have several variants called alleles. Alleles are variant forms of a gene. These are the genes that are formed in the same loci or locus of homologous chromosomes. And here are examples of alleles found in the genes of tall and short. What hereditable traits do you see in the picture? Right, so we have height, which is short and tall. Take a look at this chart. What are the hereditable traits that you see in the pea plant? Right, so we have seed shape, seed color, flower color, flower position, plant height, pad shape, and pad color. In terms of seed shape, it could be round or wrinkled. In terms of seed color, it could be yellow or green. In terms of flower color, it could be purple or white. In terms of flower position, it could be axial or terminal. In terms of plant height, it could be tall or short. In terms of pad shape, it could be inflated or constricted. And in terms of pad color, it could be green or yellow. All of these are observable traits. That's why they are called phenotypes. So when we say phenotypes, these are observable appearance or characteristics of the organism. And it could be classified as dominant trait or recessive trait. Dominant trait and recessive trait, what's the difference? Let's take a look at this example. Round seed is pollinated with a wrinkled seed and it gives rise to a plant with a round seed. So in this example, round seed is a dominant trait and wrinkled seed is a recessive trait. So when we say dominant, it is an inherited characteristic that appears in an offspring if it is contributed from a parent through a dominant allele and it masks the other trait. And when we say recessive, it is an inherited trait that is masked by the dominant trait. Phenotype is a trait that is expressed as determined by the genotype. And here are examples of the phenotypes of the dominant trait. So a brown seed, yellow seed, purple flower, HL flower, tall flower, inflated pad, and green pad. These are also the phenotypes of the recessive traits. Wrinkled seed, green seed, white flower, terminal flower, short plant, constricted pad, and yellow pad. Genotype is the genetic makeup or genetic composition for a particular trait. Now the question is, how are we going to write the genotype of a certain phenotype? We have a rule. First, you have to identify the dominant trait. So between round and wrinkled seed, which trait is dominant? It's round. And the second rule is, use the first letter of the dominant trait. So since round is the dominant trait, we use letter R to represent round and wrinkled. So round, we have double capital R. This is homozygous round. So when we say homozygous, the genes are morphologically alike, described as either homozygous dominant, represented by capital letters, or homozygous recessive, small letters. So homozygous wrinkled is represented by double, small letter, letter R. Another one for yellow. Since yellow is dominant, we use letter Y to represent yellow and green. So that is 
homozygous yellow, and for green, that is homozygous green. For purple flower, we use letter P to represent homozygous purple, and the small letter P to represent homozygous white. For eggshell flower and terminal flower, we use letter A. So, capital A for homozygous eggshell and small a for homozygous terminal. For tall plants, since T starts with the dominant trait, which is tall, so we use letter T to represent homozygous tall and small t to represent homozygous short. For inflated and constricted pads, we use letter I to represent homozygous inflated and small i to represent homozygous constricted. For green pad and yellow pad, we use letter G for homozygous green and small g for homozygous yellow. There is another way of representing the genotype of the dominant traits. For example, we have here R, R for heterozygous rank, one capital R and one is small r. Why? Because when we say heterozygous, these are the genes that are morphologically different and indicated by a big and small letter. So when we say heterozygous, it means hybrid. So it consists of one dominant allele, capital R, and one recessive allele, small r. Okay, for yellow, that is heterozygous yellow, one capital Y and one small y. Okay, for heterozygous purple, one capital P, one is small p. For homozyg a heterozygous eggshell, one capital A, one is small a. For heterozygous tall, one capital T, one small t. For heterozygous inflated, we have one capital I and one small i. And for heterozygous green, capital G and a small letter G. And take note, we do not have heterozygous for the recessive traits. It is only found in the dominant traits. Generally, we determine the dominance relationship between two alleles using monohybrid cross. For instance, we have a tall plant pollinated with a short plant. So let us identify their genotypes. Homozygous tall and homozygous short. That will be now our P1 or first parental generation. Next, we will draw a Punnett square. That is a Punnett square. And the Punnett square is named after Reginald Punnett, a British geneticist. It is a device used to show the combination of gametes. So in the Punnett square, we will draw the male gametes. And on the other side, we will draw the female gametes. So those are the symbol. Now, for instance, this is now our male. So we write the gametes on this side of the Punnett square. So that's capital T and capital T. And this is now our female. So we write in here the gametes of our female and that is small t and small t. We will identify now the possible combination of gametes, okay, of the F1. So in this box, just take a look at this one, capital T, and on top of the Punnett square is also a small t. So, it will give us a combination of capital T and small t. In this box, again, take a look at this one, that's capital T, and on top of the Punnett square, that is small t. So, the possible combination now is capital T and small t. On this box, okay, again, take a look at this one capital T, and on top, that is a small t, so it will give us capital T and small t. And on this box, again, take a look at this, that's capital T, and on top, small t, so it will give us capital T and small t. So this 1, 2, 3, 4 are now our what we call F1, or first filial generation, and it is 100% tall. Now, if our F1 is self-pollinated, okay, so that's heterozygous tall, pollinated with heterozygous tall, okay, so that will be now our P2 or second parental generation. 
So we will make again a Punnett square where we write the male and the female gametes. Okay, so this is our male. So we write now the gametes here. So that's capital T and small t. And this is now our female. So write, we write the gametes on this side of the Punnett square. So that's capital T and small t. So on this box, we will identify now the possible combinations of the gametes. So that's capital T, capital T. So it gives us a combination of double capital T. On this box, take a look, the small t, and on top, capital T, so it gives us capital T and small t combination. On this side, ayan, take a look again, this is capital T and that is small t, so capital T, small t combination. And on this side, on this part of the box, Punnett squared, the small t, small t, so it gives us a combination of two small t. These are now what our F2, or second filial generation. So, let us identify now the phenotypes of the F2. So, we have tall and short. This is tall, tall, and tall, and this one is short. Okay, let us identify the phenotypic ratio of the F2. So, just count how many tall. So, we have 1, 2, 3. So we have three tall. How many short? This one is short. So we have only one. So our phenotypic ratio now is three tall is to one short or three is to one. Let us identify this time the genotypes of the F2. Okay, and as you see, the genotypes of the F2 are homozygous tall, this one. We have also heterozygous tall or hybrid. And we have the homozygous short, this one. Okay, since we have already identified the genotypes, let us identify the genotypic ratio of the F2. So just count how many homozygous tall? This one. So we have only one. How many heterozygous tall? We have two. One, two. And how many homozygous short? We have one. Therefore, our genotypic ratio now is one homozygous tall is to two heterozygous tall is to one homozygous short or one is to two is to one. A hybrid cross and dihybrid cross. What's the difference? One a hybrid cross is a cross that involves a single trait from two organisms. For example, round seed pollinated with a wrinkled seed. So we have one trait for the male, which is round, and one trait for the female, which is wrinkled. That's why it is a monohybrid cross. Another example, we have green pad pollinated with a yellow pad. Dihybrid cross, on the other hand, is a cross that involves two traits from two organisms. For example, round yellow seed pollinated with green wrinkled seed. So where are the traits here? Round, that's one. Yellow, that's another. That makes it two. So two traits for the male. And for the female, we have wrinkled, that's one. Green is another trait. So we have two traits for female. So two traits from the male and two traits from the female are being crossed. That's why it is called a dihybrid cross. Another example, we have green constricted pad pollinated with a green inflated pad. Our discussions about monohybrid cross, dihybrid cross, dominant trait, recessive traits are all based on the laws of heredity of Mendel. These are the laws that he discovered as he experimented on the garden pea plants. And because of these laws, he became the father of genetics. Hence, these are called now the Mendelian principles of inheritance. Number one is the law of dominance. If the gene pair is heterozygous, the dominant trait will be physically expressed and the recessive trait will be masked by the dominant trait. Second law is the law of segregation. Genes of a pair segregate or separate during gamete formation and the separated genes are received by each gamete, the sperm or egg. It also explains that by gene pair segregation, a recessive gene may be paired with another recessive gene 
allowing the recessive trait to be expressed. And the third law is the law of independent assortment, which means that two or more gene pairs segregate or separate independently of one another during the formation of gametes. And the third law was formulated after he crossed two traits at the same time, a cross that involves two traits from two organisms that is called dihybrid cross. Let's have a short activity. Identify the type of cross and the Mendelian principle involved in the following process. For number one, T for tall plant and small t for short plant. So this is our Punnett square. So what type of cross is that? Do you know the answer? It's right. It is monohybrid cross. And what is the Mendelian principle involved? It's the law of dominance or the law of segregation. Okay, for number two, we have capital R, capital Y for round yellow, small r, capital Y for wrinkled yellow. Okay, and this is now our sample cross. So, what type of cross is that? Do you know the answer? It's right. It's a dihybrid cross. And since it is a dihybrid cross, what Mendelian principle is involved? It's the law of independent assortment. For the let's try part of your module, answer now these questions. For numbers 1 and 2, refer to the Punnett square below. Capital R for round seed, small r for wrinkled seed. And this is now our Punnett square. Question number 1. Based on the results on the Punnett square, which is the genotypic ratio? A. 1 homozygous round is to 2 heterozygous round is to 1 homozygous wrinkle. B. 3 homozygous round is to 1 heterozygous round. C. 3 round is to 1 wrinkled. D. 3 wrinkled is to 1 round. Number 2. Based on the results on the Punnett square, which is the phenotypic ratio? A. 1 homozygous round is to 2 heterozygous round is to 1 wrinkled. B. 3 homozygous round is to 1 heterozygous round. C. 3 round is to 1 wrinkled. D, 3 wrinkled is to 1 round. Number 3 question. Which of the following is the homozygous round seed? A, 2 capital R. B, 2 small r. C, 1 capital R, 1 small r. D, 1 small r, 1 capital R. Number 4. How do you read the gametes to a small r as a physical trait? A. Round. B. Wrinkled. C. Round wrinkled. D. Wrinkled wrinkled. Number 5. Round and wrinkled describe the physical characteristics of a particular trait on the Punnett square below. What do you call this particular trait? A. Allele. B. Gene. C. Genotype. D. Phenotype. Answer also the let's create part of your module. So on a clean sheet of paper, draw your desired facial features showing the traits of your choice from the table of human variations. So label each trait on your drawing by describing its phenotype and genotype. Rubrics for grading you. Detail 15 points, label 15 points, presentation 15 points for a total of 45 points. Answer now your module 3. You may answer in any sheet of paper and submit a screenshot of it to your teacher. Happy answering! Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like.